moving on from secondary school. Um, yeah, just a wee note about the fact that it's a it's a set up as a, a meeting rather than a webinar. So you you do have control of your your screens and your mic. Um, it might be great if you can introduce yourself in the chat if you're happy to do that. Um, and all the way through tonight, if you want to ask a question, feel free to raise your hand or turn your mic mic on um, and just kind of ask that question. We might pop into a breakout room towards the end um, and I'll have lots of uh, slides and information that I can hand out to you as well. Um, if you're joining us for an education discussion for the first time, then my name is Paula Gilhooley and I am um, one of the education advisors for Adoption UK. Um, I'm an adoptive parent and I'm a support for learning teacher in a primary school. And although I've worked in a secondary school many years ago, I don't have the experience of transitioning somebody on from secondary school to either employment or to college. So I am very grateful to be joined today by Keris and Carol, who do have some experience of that, and by some um, of you guys as well, who have brought along your experience of how things might work in practice, or you've brought along questions as well. And Keris, you work for um, the Robert Gordon University in a transition and participation team? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would you like to tell us a wee bit about what you do? And then if you've got some things you'd like to screen share as well, that would be awesome. Yeah. Um, so just so people kind of know my job title, I'm a college's engagement assistant. So I actually primarily work with college students, but my team also work within schools as well. And we support with any transitions between school to university to college to university, whether that's from care experience or estranged students as well, including things like uh, socially and economically deprived areas. And um, so we go into areas where people really don't think university is an option for them and basically signpost a way for them to get to university and showcase what they can do with a university degree in situations where maybe their parents aren't completely supportive or they're in families where they don't, they've never been to university, they don't understand it. Um, I do have some slides to share. So let me just get my little, uh, can, yeah, you can all see the screen, perfect. Ah, yeah, so I'll just come back. So I'm just going to do a whistle stop tour of what I said about kind of just the different support that is available and who to contact and things like that. So in terms of our department, I kind of already spoke a little bit about this, but this is the department that's present in every single university in the UK. And we basically promote initiatives which support underrepresented or disadvantaged people into higher education. And I did say that that includes people like care experience, estranged from their families, anything like that, um, and promotes equal opportunities to fully participate in higher education through outreach, pre-entry and traditional support, as well as contextual admissions and financial support. Um, so with RGU, for example, um, we have we have a member of staff in every single school in Aberdeenshire and Aberdeen City at least every every two weeks at least uh, for students to come talk to about any questions they have about university regardless of that's like application support uh, financial support concerns about being care experience concerns about being estranged any questions that students have about university in Aberdeen, they have us there to help them through that. And that also translates to our local colleges as well. So the local college in Aberdeen is Northeast Scotland College. So myself and a colleague is there um, every single week and we provide the same support to those people as well. And um, so just to highlight that. And like I said, the nations of the UK take very different approaches to this. Um, and I think Scotland's the best, but maybe I'm a little bit biased. <laughs> um, and in terms of care experience, they also have very different definitions. So the care experience definition in Scotland is you have been looked after either in residential care, foster care or kinship care in Scotland. UK born nationals who are under the care of local authority prior to adoption are eligible to care experience support. So even if a child has only had one day of being in a local authority care or residential care or foster care or kinship care, they still qualify for care experience support. Whereas in Scotland, not Scotland, in Wales, England and Northern Ireland, the definition is slightly different. It's known as care lever and that normally affects 13 to 16 year olds and refers mostly to those who are leaving the care system rather than those who have been in it from, from 
early on. Um, and here are just some financial programs here that we have. So in SAS, that's the Student Awards Agency for Scotland. They're the ones who pay for, you know, all of our tuition fees, student loans, things like that. Um, care experience students can get up to 9,000 per year in a bursary that they won't have to pay back if they qualify. Um, and then it's different in England, Wales and Northern Ireland. Um, in terms of RGU in particular, these are just some of the offers we offer all of our students. So you'll see we work with postcode MD10 and MD20, but we also have care experience and estranged there. Our partner schools and SHEP schools, college entrant HNCs and those who qualify for all. So any student who fa falls under the care experience definition, as mentioned in the previous slide, could be eligible for free or discount accommodation, a welcome pack up to £200 to really help with the material cost of coming to university. So that could be textbooks, printers, uh, paints, if they're an art student, anything like that can all be contributed to the welcome pack. They're eligible for scholarships, discretionary funds, um, and all of these things we work really closely with our students on, and we are basically there to help support our students in any way that we can. Um, so that's just kind of what we offer at RGU, specifically for care experience estranged. And if they were to choose the college route first um, and they had that HNC and HND, they would also qualify for, you know, travel support and our program called Degree Prep, which really focuses on that transitional period between different education systems and gives students the toolkit they need to succeed at a university with us. And for those of you who don't know, this is also a really handy tool. So this is called propel.org.uk. And every single university in Scotland is on this system. Um, so you can just search by a specific course, college, university or place near you. So the example we've chosen here is actually Robert Gordon's university. And it will show you the kind of support that we offer care experience students. So we have a named contact that's there for guidance and support. We run outreach and sessions and activities like I mentioned. We also offer that pre-application help before they come to study with us. We give guidance for offer holders and we have an entire web page dedicated to care leavers as well as careers, advice and support after graduation. And in terms of accommodation you can see there we have a place to live all year round and if not we can help find you somewhere to live for the whole year round. And there's specific funding that is specifically for care leavers or care experience students and then additional funding such as grants bursaries and grants are available so if you're a young person or child that you're supporting with that transition to university has shown an interest in a very specific university or a very specific college I don't think all colleges on this maybe Carol can correct me on that but if they have a very specific university they want to do they can just search the university and they'll be led to the main contact at that university for care experience students and they can be the first foot of crawl for any questions questions or queries that parents may have or students may have about that transitional period between school to university. Um, and I just want to stress that we're very much here to help students. We want to support students any way they can, like Paula was saying. If there's something that you think we could be doing better, let us know. We are always looking to help and improve. Um, and I think that's kind of a, just a whistle stop tour and everything that we kind of offer in RGU and in Scotland in particular and um, there's just some other resources there as well and um, so the Scottish Funding Council also has a specific page for care experience students as well and these are the, the Scottish Funding Councils are the ones that basically fund all of our activities as well within widening access and participation so we want to learn more about kind of the care experience student that would be a good resource as well in Scotland um, and I'll be hanging around so if you do have any questions just fire them my way. That's fabulous. Um, I think probably maybe before we move on, it's a good opportunity actually to say, does anybody have any questions that they want to ask? Because I suppose the, the, the question that I had was mm -hmm. actually how involved are you with parents? So for someone like me who kind of is still mm -hmm. making my 14 year old's lunchbox and packing her bag, yeah. I can imagine I might want to be quite involved when she yeah. heads off to me as well or, or, or college or Whatever. So um, with parents, when students receive an offer from us, they're invited to our discovery day, which is there for students and parents. We also have a number of applicant evenings as well that take place throughout the whole of Scotland. And um, my colleague was just into an in Edinburgh and Glasgow. Um, I was in one in Fife and 
Paul Kirkley every week as well. Um, and that's really just like a drop in session for parents to come along to chat to us about it, for students to come along to chat to us about it. And um, we also develop a parent's guide as well, specifically for a care experience too. Um, so it's just, it's just like this little booklet that you should be getting as an offer holder uh, from us. And it kind of just gives you all the information you want to know about our university in particular. So all of our support services, our accommodation, our financial support, the specific care experience support that we offer as well. Brilliant. Thank you. Someone's asked, if, if, would it be okay for us to share your slides as well? Yes, that's absolutely fine. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, within Scotland, yes, uh, yeah. because he was still in foster care or kinship care or, yeah. or numbers of care. Um, within England, Wales and Northern Ireland, not so much. Scotland, yes. Yeah, um, it's to do with the, the legal transfer of the parental rights. So, I mean, if the parental rights have been transferred at any stage from the birth parent to you, um, then they will have been in the local authority. I think it as well, if you got in touch with your adoption agency, they would also be able to help provide you with evidence that would meet yeah. that criteria too. Good That's place perfect. to start. Yeah. Um, so hi everybody, uh, my name's Carol, um, I'm here with two hats on, so I work for Adoption UK as Community Engagement Lead for the Hashtag E project, so I can talk about that later if you want, and what we do and what we've got coming up to support people um, going through different transitions within their lives. Um, I'm here with my other hat on, um, I'm the Health and Wellbeing Advisor at Fife College, um, previous to that I was a Guidance Advisor at the College and Student President and a Student Rep, so I've got lots of experience uh, with Fife College. Um, so Fife College has five campuses across Fife um, and they deliver a range of um, courses all the way from like life skills, principles, trust, right the way up to degree courses as well. So we do have some degrees with um, institutions across Scotland. We don't provide all degrees, but we do have some. Um, and we deliver 30% of higher education courses and 70% of it is further education. Um, we've got tourism, we've got business and enterprise, care social sciences, there's creative and then there's engineering, science and technology as well. So there's loads and loads of options there for students. Um, it's a good way, we've got a lot of like um, articulation pathways with the universities so that allows students to do the HNC, HND at college and some other, you know, associative um, universities they can get you know into maybe second year or it could be first year just depending on how it works with the transfers for that um, or they can go on to do some of our BA courses within college which means that they don't have to move away from home they've still got the family networks behind them and it's less of a big jump as because we know that university is a big jump whether you're here experience or not and um, so it, it kind of helps bridge that gap and if things don't work out you're not leaving university like one or two years in with nothing to show for it you could walk away with HNC and HND so it's, a, it's a less detrimental that way um, and less student debt as well as we like to promote. Um, so at Five College there is a dedicated care experience coordinator Susan so what we what happens is, is when the applications come in and they've marked their care experience we know that not everybody does mark it and um, so we do do follow-up calls and, and through discussions we can identify more and um, we do um, we give them the details of who their name contact is and uh, we do a keep them warm process so they'll get a load of information sent out to them so it's just trying to keep the communication lines open while they're waiting to start they can come in for campus tours and um, on more than one occasion and once they've got their timetable we can show them where the classrooms actually are um, and we've also got a get ready for college course that we do with key experience um, individuals from schools. So they will be identified through the school and they'll come in and meet all the support staff and they'll go through like its employability team that runs that. Um, and we go in and talk to them and it's just kind of like bridging that wee gap so that they feel like they've got something over the summer months um, before coming in. Um, we, what else have we got? We've got Champions Group, so that is 40 members of staff um, and that's from support staff to academics. Um, and we basically promote all the voices of care experience students about, you know, it could be activities that we're running, it could be campaigns, projects and stuff like that. Um, for example, we do fundraising at Christmas so that every care experience student's got um, a Christmas card and a voucher and things like that. Uh, we did a raffle um, and we did a t-shirt um, design competition because we had an advocacy service with Who Cares Scotland um, that students could access um, and we used to wear the t-shirts as an awareness raising thing. So that for the time somebody did a corporate parent training, they were awarded a t-shirt that they could wear at Shoulder Care Days. 
And then we thought, why are we promoting another organisation? Why are we not promoting all the good work that we do? So we've got two experienced students to design our T-shirts, which are like with a lovely green heart on it. Um, and that was their legacy going forward. We now promote those T-shirts, so it's nice to have something in-house. Um, our guidance team are really supportive with care experienced students and nice to work in that department. So again, like I said before, we'll do welcomes and tours, we'll help with funding applications, um, UCAS, SAS applications, you name it, we help with absolutely everything. Um, and again, we um, work with external partners and organisations like we do with every other um, student um, with regards to mental health, um, health and wellbeing, and things like that too. So there's lots and lots of stuff there. Um, we invite the parents in with the our carers or you know responsible adult whoever they want to bring them can bring the best friend to come around and walk around the campus and stuff as well and uh, we try and reduce as many barriers as possible to be fair and um, because we know how daunting it can be and um, can we move over to the next one because i can't remember what you want into the other slide as well. <laughs> so again we're speaking about the funding so there's a care experience first day which is 202 pounds a week um, we also provide budget in sessions because we know that some kids have not had this amount of money before and are quite vulnerable and could be taken away. So we make sure that people feel a bit safe with that money, how to manage it and things like that too, because there has been some incidents in the past where people are trying to keep friends and stuff like that. And you ask them, where's all your money went? And you find out they've been buying gifts and stuff like that. So we want to make sure that vulnerable students are safe as well when it comes to money and things and how to, to utilise that correctly. Um, again, we've got a three way then go on to do HNC and HND. It'll be through SAS to get the funding from, and like you know, like Kenneth has explained already. Um, we have scholarships that are open to all students, but we actually have a specific um, care experience scholarship that, that students can apply to, um, and you can get up to five hundred to one thousand pounds, um, and it helps them write, you know, like a little supporting statement. So it's kind of getting them prepared for that world of work, so that they kind of sell themselves. Um, and then we could be awarded money that absolutely we don't want to know what you've spent it on it's entirely up to you and it doesn't affect any funding or any benefits or anything that they're on as well um so we've got we had care experience officers so when i was a student there um uh we i was a first care experience officer at the college and um, so they were dedicated to sports students and um, we did lots of events um, so, for example, we've got women's officers within the student association. Um, you know, we've got um, well-being advice, uh, well-being officers, and um, we've got ones that champion, you know, sports and things like that too. So, care experience was a new thing back then, that's four years ago, and um, that they came into place. Um, and it was a, there was a real, it was just before the bursary came into place. So, as you can imagine, when that came into place and then the money came, it was great. So, um, yeah, we do awareness days, and we have it, we have dedicated agencies that come in. And promote all the work that they do in the local community. So it could be the two day herd group comes by, and we've got you know two carers come in and do stuff, and they've got scholarships and opportunities that they promote as well. And um, we've also got our social media campaigns and things like that we do too, and we do drop in sessions as well. And then it's peer peer support that then goes on from that as well. So there's loads and loads of support network and social um, opportunities for students because we, we know that. It can be daunting if you feel like you don't know someone else that's, that's like you or from like a background like you. Um, so we really want to make sure that that's there. We've won loads of awards for the stuff that we've done with your experience as well. So we like to toot our own trumpet sometimes. <laughs> um, and staff training is really important to make sure that staff, are, 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 we've got mandatory who cares Scotland for corporate parenting training and things like that too. Um, I worked on stuff with the Open University because we've got an articulation with them and we've developed their care experience uh, training as well. So I don't know if some of you have never seen that before. Um, so we work with loads of people and we feel like we're one big family. Um, we have lots of care experience staff um, who disclose their backgrounds as well, which um, students really like to hear about their success stories and how they've been at college and what jobs they're doing and things like that now. Um, and I always like to promote my story because I went to traditional university and had no support as an adoptee. Um, and totally failed and came back as a, a mature student and obviously went back to college and did HNC, HND and then I did my degree, my master's through the articulation at the Open University. So it's just kind of saying, um, you know, there is no wrong path and um, sometimes you don't know your, your, your elbow at certain ages and it does take a while to get to where you want to be and life kind of shapes that for them. So it's very much just supporting them at each step of the way um, and getting them where they need to be. Um, but yeah. There's loads I could talk about, but I'm not going to bore you anymore. But if you've got any questions about that, I'm happy to answer them.
Sorry, I, did I not? Did I miss out some slides? Have you said? Uh, sorry, I think I said that. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I'll um, I'll come out of that then. Does anybody have any questions for Carol? Because again, it sounds amazing. Yeah, so and it is a lot better now. Um, so obviously when we first started doing things, um, the term care experience and stuff was still relatively new and the funding really wasn't there. Um, so what we did is we did a shared practice event um, with all the some colleges and universities across Scotland about what we'd done, what we'd implemented and how we got there. So there was a lot of good sharing of that. And I know that New College Lanarkshire do do a lot more support for care experience students and stuff now. So there is a lot more out there. And there's still a lot more to do, but, you know, where everybody's on the right path and trying to support everybody as best they can. So each each college will vary. It has some colleges on it, but not all colleges. It's definitely more geared towards universities. Um, but I quite I often find that if I'm searching specific colleges, for example, if I just type in care experienced or estranged students in the search bar I'll get a page that lists all the support and things that are there so the information is there you just kind of have to look to it for it but for universities Propel might be your best bet. But I really love that sort of the, the building up your skills from when you leave university if you don't have the qualifications that you need and you're not quite ready for that kind of sense of independence there's a little stepping stone that you can do. Um, I think that sounds great. So yeah, in, in the chat, we've got um, someone with no academic skills and not, in get, not getting much support from school. The person's in fifth year and school are not keen on him staying on for this reason. Um, he currently goes to college via school and he's applied for life skills course. Would he be entitled to funding? Um, I don't know if Carol or Kenneth, you want to say anything there? Would college be able to provide more support? Would there be somebody at college that could talk that person through what they could apply for? Yeah, so usually when they're under 16, it's EMA um, that they would get, which is, you know, paid only during term time and not holidays and stuff like that. It also depends on the length of the course and how many hours is involved as well. So it has to meet a certain threshold to, to qualify for funding as well. Um, but the thing is, you could speak to, if you speak to either you know the guidance department or the student funding they'll be able to explain everything down for you about what you'd be entitled to and what the process would be so I, again when you when you were talking earlier the idea that there was a guidance team yeah. at college or university was kind of a sort of new one to me I don't yes. remember that from from my my days at uni um yeah, so We've got a lot of kids that come up and they're like, oh, no, you're a guidance teacher. And we're like, we're not a guidance teacher. It's totally different. So it, it's changing that mindset with them about what we're there for. Like, you can come and talk to us about absolutely anything, whether it's in college or personal or anything like that as well. So we've got five campuses, which three are really big and two are really small. So on each campus, there are three guidance advisors. So they're part of a team. Um, and then you've got two health and wellbeing advisors. And then within the classes as well, they do get an allotted guidance time with their tutor. Um, and we can go in and do you know workshops or we can do specific supports and stuff if they're needing it as well and um, so yeah the teams are quite good and they all work really closely with students and with the care experience students which is slightly different to you know the mainstream students mainstream students will get a named contact which is usually their their tutor whereas with the care experience they'll get a named guidance advisor so that guidance advisor is, uh, is responsible for a pool of students so if they need to go to anything that's like a one-stop shop because we know we did research with students and stuff and they're like i'm fed up speaking to about five people about different things and having to re-explain my story and then they're just like actually i'm just not going to ask you any questions anymore because there's no point and um, so that way they've got one point of call and then they'll work behind the scenes and as well other teams to support them so that that student's not having to be stressed or worried about it. they can go back you know about their daily business while we're all dealing with it for them yeah university is the same we also have the named contact and that's the first port of call and then that person will work behind the scenes and make sure the support is in place like carol said um within rgu as well we just have a very like phenomenal student support team as it stands anyway uh so you know we have counseling and well-being on site we have educational psychologists on site for learning different different um, diagnosis and things like that uh so 
like it's there for care experience but it's there for other students as well and it's just to stress that yes you do get a lot of support in school but that support does continue when you go into further and higher education and you're not just left on your own yeah I'm wondering so one of the, the, the months sorry just to quote some students and I've put a carrot up like this as well is that when they do come to college or university from school they're like this is totally different it's not what I expected it to be like I feel like a person rather than a number and um, again it's the whole about the learning and thinking outside the box as well they learn that, that it's like you know I didn't I, I struggled at school because I didn't fit inside a box but here I realized that I just think differently and it should be like that across the board but it isn't and it's a shame that it takes for that stage for it to be recognized but for me as an adult I've got FASD um, and I struggled at school and college was a really big turning point for me and um, so yeah just to echo there's lots of support out there yeah. yeah. I think there's still a lot of that um, yeah. traditional thought that you know if you want to do a certain prof profession or if you're wanting to be something that you need to go to traditional university to achieve x y and z and this that and the next thing and for me that's what I was told and um, so I went off to a traditional university and it didn't work very well but if I know, knew that I could have went the college route and still did the exact same thing, rather than leaving university two years in, I would have left with a HND, if that makes sense, with, except for left with debt and nothing else to show for it sort of thing. So I think it's just trying to say to them, you know, if you're not quite ready or if we know that, you know, you're, you've got a complex background or you're, you're just not maybe maturity level's not there yet then actually why don't you try this for a year or two and then if you want to go to traditional university you can but actually we do pro we provide a degree if you just want to stay at college and do it as well so it's just trying to get that information out there I mean we do have a school college partnership as well and we do go out um, but I still think there's a lot of work to be done there um, around about you know, you know the difference between college and university and especially for care experience anyway. and Sorry, someone's put in, someone's asked a, a question in the chat about transport. If you have a, a child who their kind of independent living skills um, are maybe slightly behind and they're not quite ready yet for traveling independently to college, is there any supports that college can offer that would help with travel? Yeah, so the inclusion department can help with funds that are available. So we've got like students that maybe get taxis to college and stuff like that as well. Um, obviously we have got the under twenty two bus stuff, but we know that everybody doesn't want to go on a bus. And um, so there is funds and stuff out there, and we work really closely with um, an organisation through Five Health and Social Care, which is the well, and they offer befriending and they can they, they can travel with people on buses to build up those confidence skills and things like that too to get them you know prepared for work and stuff like that as well so there's lots of different avenues and there's lots of pots of funding um all depending if you fit certain criteria and things like that um but they can all be discussed with you and um, like for example if you have a, a, a disability or a learn a, a learning aspect that you need support with and um, we create a learning plan for everybody as well so and then they also get a social support plan can get drawn up so maybe they don't have a learning difficulty or anything like that but they maybe struggle you know with anxiety or um you know going into new places and things like that they can get that drawn up it is shared with their lecturers and it's also available for support staff to see so they will read up and see actually what are my struggles um, and what would help me cope better so it's very much written by the student and it's mirrored on in both departments as well Well, in Fife anyway, it's usually they'll work with the school college partnership will come in and can do taster sessions and see what sort of stuff that they're in that they're wanting to get involved mm -hmm. with. They'll then come in like like do little taster sessions in college to see what college life is like. Um, SDS will work for them to get applications and stuff, but we do know that some schools are very quick to tick a box and say they've went to, they're going to college and they don't work with some people. And um, my personal advice would be is to go to the college yourself and set up a guidance a guidance appointment and go along and sit against the advice and say, look, this is where we're at. This is the support that they need. What do you advise? And they'll talk through courses that are available. They'll talk about the support. They might even take you down to go and meet some of the inclusion assistants or people that, that they could be working with. And then you can then go away and make an informed decision about what you want to do. You can then do the application on your own. We really streamlined our application things. And um, so it's basically, you just put in your name and personal details. SBA pulls all the information through from your SBA number. And you just basically write like a really small um, 
short summary about why you want to come to college, why you want to do the course and what your future goals are. And that's basically our application system. That's all that's involved. But if you are even struggling to do that, you can come in and a guidance advisor will sit with you while you put the application in as well. So one of the questions was, is there a waiting list for the supports that you talk about at college? Um, because the supports are amazing. Would you have yeah. to wait for them? Um, not necessarily. Um, so just to explain, like once you put an application in, it can take up to six weeks for that to be processed. Get to, get to the college, speak to a guidance advisor as soon as possible so that you can get something hopefully set up you know, quickly. Um, so that does take a while. And until they've been offered a place, once you've got that offer, then we could then say, right, into our inclusion department, you know, can you please get in touch to identify as if, if you've texted and there's any learning? and they'll set up your learning support plan so that uh, the quicker you do that then that would be ready for them starting prior to them starting so the quicker you do that the better and um, obviously if you do leave it a bit late or you've applied late there will be a, maybe a bit of a delay in that being being ready and um, once you've got that offer you will then start getting communications from um, the college regarding you know our keeping keep them warm campaign as they call it and um, so it could be that, you know, keep an eye out for, you know, the, the funding stuff starting to open up. If you need help with that, this is because you get in touch with or how to book an appointment. And um, then if they are, if they've ticked, you know, the care experience, then we will have the get ready for college stuff. We'll have the welcome evenings that you can come in with and get you back and when the timetables of issues. Um, and our apologies are very much camp uh, community campuses. So you can come in absolutely as many times as you want. Um, you can bring out whoever you want in to go around the tours and things like that too. We've got induction weeks, we've got freshers, and then it all starts really kicking off and there's loads of, it's like information overload a bit, so it can be very, very like, oh. But, you know, once you break it down and you meet your name contact and you've got, you know, you can message them up, you can message them through email and teams and stuff like that once you've got everything set up. Um, yeah, so the quicker you get the application in and once you've got that offer, the, the support really starts from there, really. Uh, and uh, university is the same as well. Um, so as soon as that offers in and we've identified you as someone who has a learning difference or who may have a learning difference for his care experience, we will get in touch with you as soon as you've accepted that offer and get that support in place for you when you come to us in September. Fantastic. There's another question, another a little sort of scenario of someone who's um, 16 in September, but they're only in third year because they've been deferred for a year. And this person would like to do some sort of um, bricklaying course and um, they have ADHD um, I'm, I'm not quite sure what the other one is it looks like VI I don't really uh, impaired I would guess uh, sorry visual impairment yeah oh yeah perfect thank you that would because I was thinking CVI but I was yeah perfect visual impairment maybe and um, um, I don't know if the question is related to their age so if they if they've been deferred a year they're slightly older obviously than everybody else um, at the moment he's going to school um, and the school are trying to engage him in supports but he's reluctant to accept supports because he doesn't want to be different um, and certainly that's something that I would probably see with some kids in school um, I don't know if, if again maybe with kids at college if you see that that there are people that are reluctant to accept supports is it a case of you just keep trying to to offer and till you get something that kind of is a right fit for that person. Yeah, I think, I think, sorry, my kids are trying to come in the room. Um, so yeah, I think you can only offer so much. Um, it's like you can leave a hard horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Um, yes. But something does seem to click eventually. I don't know, you know, I think if you've been stuck in school and you feel like you're stuck in a rut, I think a change of scenery and something being different really then makes you want to access that support. Um, with regards to being 16, um, it's dependent on entry qualifications for, for brick lane and things like that, because we do need to have a certain level. But there's no there's no reason why we can't be coming and doing, like I mentioned to Lynn before, you know, doing those sort of transfers trusts or employability skills or something like that, that will really build you up to then level four, which then would mean that you'd be able to apply for a lot more wider range of um, courses and things like that too. So, like I said, there is a way whether you're not quite there yet there is a wee roundabout way to always get to where you want to be whether it maybe takes you maybe six months off your learner journey and um, it's worth looking into but again get in touch with the college explain the situation and find out what they've got on offer for you at that campus yeah I would just reiterate everything Carol said um 
With RGU, it's actually we can do anonymous support as well. So the lecturers don't need to know anything. Your peers don't need to know anything. Um, they, they basically are inclusion team were just like this person needs extra time or this person needs X. And that's the end of the discussion. And the lecturers don't need to know the details. They like the teacher would need to know the details, you know. Um, so, yeah, it's just that it can be anonymous as well. If students. Uh, and I think the for me as well the the starting early talking about your care experience and talking about um the fact that you might need a bit of extra support or the fact that you have a community that you can embrace you know and that's I think where the e project comes in as well Carol doesn't it getting people familiar familiar with the fact that that's just something that you have in your in your background um that that I suppose you have to deal with to a, a certain extent. But there are lots of people that have got something in common with you. And if you've got that community network and you can get to a place where you're OK talking about it and kind of owning the fact that, well, that's part and parcel of your your history. It doesn't necessarily define you, but but you can um, just make more conscious choices going forward, I think. I firmly believe that if you got to get in touch with the college that you wanted, um, that he was wanting to go to and spoke to, you know, the guidance team and says, look, I'm wanting to apply, is there any support with X, Y and Z? They'll be able to tell you exactly what's available. Um, I know that we've got students that will contact us pre-application and we'll take them on tours and stuff before they've even, you know, typed that application form up and then we'll kind of follow it through to see have you got your offer yet? And then we'll get them back in. It'd be the same with university as well. If you want to go to university in the future, it would be to get in touch with the university and see yeah. what pre-enrollment or pre-application support is available. I mean, all you have to do is ask. It's pretty much what I'm trying to say here. Is like, if you ask, you will get answers. <laughs> I don't, I personally don't see why if you can have a support for, let's say a higher exam, because you have an additional support need, why you wouldn't then be offered something at college level, if you can prove it. So I think, you know, there must be supports there for people who need it. it. That makes perfect sense to me. So it is just a case of speaking to somebody to find out what it is that they can do. Um, yeah, because if you, for example, if you're dyslexic and you get extra time or you get a, a computer, you would presumably then have that same kind of supports at university or college level. You do, and as well as long as the schools do the right transition forms and they're given the right information, and that's key. You know, to, you know, if we don't know from the school, then we don't know sort of thing. But then we won't then just go by what that transition form says. We will meet with the student and say, right, what do you need at college now? What do you struggle with? What are your strategies? That sort of thing. And it doesn't even have to be that you've got a diagnosis for something. It's I struggle with this. I that this helps me with this sort of thing. So yeah. All the way through secondary school, the young people are working towards leaving school and it's a transition that should take time. It's not something that happens right away. There's a comprehensive programme offered by Skills Development Scotland, which works towards preparing children for employment, apprenticeships and training. And I'll come on to that um, on the next slide as well. Um, there's also the fact that your child should be part of the Getting It Right for Every Child system. So that means that in the months and years before your child gets to the point where they're leaving school, then it's maybe something that you're working towards and it crops up in your meetings as action points. So in your concerns and action points, you can address that specific area of need. And it might be that your child needs more intensive support from the Skills Development Scotland team that can be arranged. So there are perhaps one-to-one -one meetings that, that can take place or meetings that you can be part of as well. Um, they might need an additional programme to be confident and ready for leaving school or for further education, and, and those kind of things can be supported um, through the school team. The school team and social work can also put you in touch with relevant organisations who provide additional support for, for people who need it. Um, you might also be able to get extra help with your application form in school. So if your child receives support for learning, for example, they would continue to be offered that same kind of support. Um, and obviously the main thing to watch out for in the application process, like Carol and Keris have said, is to make sure you flag that care experience 
so that you can access all the supports. Um, if you're not happy with the school decision, um, there is a process for escalating your concerns and that would probably start off with, you know, the, the idea of a transition meeting and putting your concerns into writing and making sure that you speak with the head teacher and then Enquire have a fact sheet that will explain the, the different steps that you can go through that so you can flag your um, concerns to the local authority and then up to kind of sort of tribunal level and appeals. Just look, just follow the Enquire fact sheet. For young people with additional support needs who need support with the transition to adulthood, um, there's also the Scottish Transitions Forum. Um, on this website, there are examples of good practice, films and webinars, and there are contact details and links to other organisations as well, so definitely well worth a look. The Skills Development Scotland programme is very comprehensive. It's got no upper age limit and it kind of starts around, around about primary school level. So children are working through this programme of skills um, all the way through their school career. And even after a child leaves school, they can still access the Skills Development Scotland team through high street offices. Um, this means that there's access to careers advice all the way through life. Um, and there's also a section here for parents and carers. So if you have particular questions about your child's um, path or you think that your child needs more support with this, then you can contact somebody from the Skills Development Scotland team. Um, so... Um, there will be link in the links in the slide, so make sure you kind of have a wee investigation too. Um, the careers advisors also attend the parent consultations for senior students, so again you've got access to extra support there. Um, and there's a dedicated area on the My World of Work pages um, dedicated to parents, and there's webinars and there's drop-in clinics, so you should be able to access a wee bit more support from the Skills Development Scotland team. I'm not going to say too much here because I think Carol and Keris have covered this really well. Um, I won't say anything about the Care Experience Student Bursary. Um, the Unite Foundation um, has support with finances over holiday time so students can pay for accommodation um, and they're not homeless during those holiday periods. So again, you can search that up and, and click on that to find out a wee bit more. Um, there's also an independent living fund which offers grants of up to £4,000 as part of a transition to adulthood for young people who um, might meet the, the disability criteria. Um, and it's worth saying as well that you might not consider your child disabled, but the definition might include ASD or FASD or ADHD. And so it's worth exploring the supports on offer there and checking the criteria. There's also something called um, person centred planning PCP and an advisor can help plan out um, or, or, or help towards planning life goals for um, a child who is um, disabled. There is a cost for this service so whatever organisation provides the support make sure you look at the costs first. And there's also a range of disability benefits and grants. There's a lot of information on the website um, contact.org.uk for families and it explains things like disability allowance, which becomes personal independence payment. And it's well worth looking through all of this to make sure that you don't miss out. Um, and I might come back onto that in a few minute um, on the next slide. As your child reaches the stage where they are legally an adult, there will be lots of changes in terms of benefits and grants. And you might also be the parent of a young person who requires significant support going forward. Um, you might think of yourself as a carer as well as a parent. Um, and if that's the case, there are local authority carer support organisations whose job it is really is to, to help you understand the supports that, that you might be able to access. So it would be well worth contacting someone to make sure that you are registered as a carer. Um, and if you do register yourself as a carer, then the local authority has got a statutory responsibility to assess your needs as a carer. Um, if you need a little bit of support with that, then um, or, or you need to find out where your local authority carer organisations might be who is going to provide that support for you, 
um, then you might want to check out the Kinship pages on kinship.scot. Um, there's a great um, page there that's got a list of local authority contacts um, and it also has a list of community groups and supports by local organised by local authority. It's a great website. If your child has significant support needs, um, then you might already have a disability social worker allocated. So each authority will provide support during the transition process um, and your disability social worker could be invited to transition meetings. So again, use the CARE information website to find out key contacts and instigate a caring assessment if you need one. The CARE free um, website, um, there are some supports here for carers. And again, if you register yourself as a carer, you get to see what supports you're entitled to. Um, and you might be eligible for a support towards a break from caring or a wellbeing grant. Um, staff, um, I think used to be the Scottish Through Care and After Care Forum. It's a membership organisation for everyone involved in the lives of care leavers. There's lots of information on the website, there's news and there's events, lots of resources um, on the financial support for care leavers too. Um, and there are links to information on care bursaries there. Um, and if you attended the event, I will be sending out fact sheets for that too. There are organisations which exist like REACH to give more information to young people directly. So if your young person is somebody who likes to do things for themselves, they might want to have a wee look through that website um, and collect information about the supports that exist. It will be written in a way that's engaging for young people. Um, I think Carol might have mentioned Venture Scotland and the Prince's Trust earlier too. Um, there are also community programmes that support children's health and well-being. Um, so children maybe who would benefit from outdoor education programmes, who would benefit from increased um, confidence or benefit from programmes where they are working alongside other people, then having a wee look at Venture, Venture Scotland or the Prince's Trust might be a good idea good idea. Um, Venture Scotland offers free progressive four-stage personal development courses up to 12 months long that help young people improve their physical, mental and emotional well-being um, and, and helps work towards change. It's open for young people age 16 to 30 and there are centres in Edinburgh and Glasgow but because the work takes place um, outdoors across Scotland it might be open to um, a, a much bigger geographical area. And the Prince's Trust offers personal and social development programmes and training in things like um, being able to start your own business. They offer free courses. Again, well worth a little look around that website if you're looking for something extra for your child. We, we have the e-project the e um, relaunch and the event in Stirling that's coming up soon. It's, so the... the so I run the e-project. Um, we've got our relaunch event because we've got more funding, so we're able to bring it back because we only had it for just over a year. And um, there's a like an activity day, and um, just at the church in Stirling. Um, it's on eleven till three. And um, we can send you information. More welcome to come along. You can come and meet me. I can talk to them about me having FSC and how I struggled with it, and mm -hmm. the good things that have come from it as well. Um, our groups are from adoptee, kinship and FASD. We don't separate them into those great, the groups. It's all based on uh, stage rather than age as well. So we've got under nines, 10s, 15s, and then 15 to 17 and 18 plus. So again, even depending on the age, you don't have to go into that age category. They can decide to be in a lower age category if they, they suit the activities better. Um, mm -hmm. But there's lots of uh, social opportunities and stuff. And um, we are going to be launching a hashtag e-magazine. So if you've got any interest in photography or writing stories and content and stuff, there's loads and loads of stuff that you can get involved with. And our employability advisor, Fiona, who also works at Five College, um, she is back as well. And we're doing lots of transition work. We're doing work on future self, CV building, opportunities, jobs, all that sort of stuff, talk about college and all that. And it's all very much our plan of work is targeted at certain points of the year that are really important to young people with transitions and stuff. So it might be really worth even coming to meet us in Sutherland and have a chat about yeah. stuff. I just want to say thank you for having me and chatting to me and it's lovely meeting all of you guys.
It was amazing to have you. Yeah, thank you for coming, Karis. Yeah, and and Carol, thank you so much. That because it is so so reassuring as a parent to hear what's out there, um, and to think that actually my child will be looked after. She will be all right if she decides to go to college. You know, there's lots of stuff that's there.